Attention, all Calling All Cars listeners. Next week, Calling All Cars will not be heard on Tuesday night, but on Thursday night at 8.30, and on every Thursday night thereafter. Copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars to broadcast 230 at Pier A in San Pedro. Investigate the trouble. Call an ambulance if needed. That's all. Rose and Quest. <laughs> tempered with merciless trials, such as the trial by fire. On occasion, a defendant was required to hold his hand in a blazing fire, and if he made no outcry and wasn't burned, he was free. Well, friends, the amazing new Rio Lube motor oil I've been telling you about is being put to that identical test every hour of the day by an ever-growing army of motorists, and it always emerges with a clean bill of health to be justly acclaimed as the finest, toughest, smoothest motor oil sold in the West. I've tried Rio Lube, Dr. Lindsley, and believe that it's a fact, but what's the reason? Well, the reason, Mr. Merrill, is as important as it's simple. Rio Lube is forced to run the gamut of an exceptional refining process that definitely kills off and completely removes sludge, carbon-forming elements, and other foreign matters. Moreover, this great 100% paraffin base oil is thoroughly de-waxed and de-jellied. That's what gives Rio Lube such Herculean film strength. That's why Rio Lube can't break down under the intense heat of any speed, no matter how fast you drive. That's why 150 railroads, eight major airlines, and motorists of 45 nations of the world use this same type of oil. Friends, when you turn into the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood for your Rio Grande cracked gasoline, give your motor another good turn by getting a refill of Rio Lube. One trial will convince you, too. It's the finest motor oil sold in the West. We are honored tonight to have with us Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The constantly increasing problems of law enforcement are each year, making it more essential that the public indicate in a very direct manner its interest in law enforcement and its desire to cooperate in efforts to combat crime. No police department can be developed to a point where it will be able to operate without the wholehearted cooperation of those who are concerned about the best interests of their community. The attitude that law enforcement is a problem solely for those who are professionally engaged in police work must be replaced by the realization that the individual citizen has as real a place in law enforcement as has the officer. The public should indicate its unquestioned support in movements to apprehend and prosecute those who violate the law. We shall not deal in tonight's story with the efforts made to prevent justice from being done the criminal involved, but those efforts are a matter of record. It is sufficient that justice was obstructed. I shall be with you again at the end of the program. ship's chronometer crept toward midnight aboard the city of Los Angeles as four seamen made their way down the gangplank and toward a taxicab standing on the pier. Who wants to stay on board a ship on a night like this? This is the sort of night when a fellow needs a girl, a bottle of wine, a place on the beach. Uh-uh, he's loose again. <laughs> yeah, he gets that way every time the moon's full. <laughs> Come on, let's grab a taxi and see what we can find to do. Oh, you fellas have to do something. Can't you ever just take things easy? Do you always have to be doing something? Sure we do. Come on, let's go find a place where we can get a drink. Oh, hey, driver. The driver, look, uh, the driver, we're after a drink. Uh, you know where we can get some good liquor? Sure. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go, then. Looking for anything besides liquor? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, don't kid me. You know what I mean. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. Let's go. Me, too. Come on, 
in. We'll need you to drive us back. Okay, I'll stick around. Well, come on, fellas. Let's get that drink, huh? All right. All right, Jack. Got some customers for you. Okay, take them in the park. Right on through the kitchen, fellas. Sure, but that ain't it. Don't let him hear you say that. He's been drinking. All right, how many drinks you guys want? Four for us and one for the driver. Yeah, you don't count so good. You count me in and I buy every third drink, you fucker. Ah, okay. keep your shirt on. All right, pour yourself a drink and forget it. Yeah. Say, hey, driver, what's your name? Card. Why? Oh, I just got tired of calling you driver. Hey, here's your car. liquor, boys. It'll be three bucks. Three bucks? Yeah, sure. Six drinks and four bits of drink. Well, let me see. Six drinks. Oh, yeah, all right, but it's pretty stiff, ain't it? Oh, forget it, though. Here, I'll pay for them. This was my idea anyway. The party's on me. Here you are. Three dollars. Thanks, buddy. It's to you. <coughs> well, when you want another one, yell. I'll be in the kitchen. Sure. Hey, look, Sarge. What's in that room there? Why don't you find out for yourself? Yeah, I think I will. Hey, you want us to order you another drink? Sure, but make us better in that last one. That won't be hard. <laughs> hey, Clark, bring it another round. Okay, coming up. Isn't this mighty poor liquor for four bits? Hey, fellas, there's a girl in there and she's crying. <laughs> Probably that fanny you're scared of. Shut up. Sit down, Sean. I'll see what's the matter. You take my advice and stay out of there. What's eating silver tonight? <laughs> I don't believe you would. Of course I wouldn't. You're not like the others. No. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm glad. How old are you? Seventeen. My name is yours. Who brought you here? Oh, please, please don't ask me anymore. Just, just go. But why? Well, he'll kill you. I know he will. Who will? Jack, that, that man out there, the one who serves the drinks, oh, oh, oh. he'll kill you. <laughs> he won't do anything to me. Forget him. Tell me about yourself. Well, I, I don't know why I should, but well, somehow I trust you. You seem different from the other men. How different? Oh, I, I can't explain it, but when you came through that door and, and just stood there like you are now, and looked at me. Oh, everything seemed different. Brighter, maybe. Like... Like what? Like all this was a sort of a dream. It is. I know. I only wish it were a dream. How long have you been here? In this place? Yes. A week. How long have you been with that fellow, Clark? Four months. Where's your home? In Arizona. Mm -hmm. I met Jack there. I, I was working. He made love to me. I liked him then. I, I thought I loved him. We were going to get married. Then he had to leave Arizona and come back here to California. He said he had a job for me, so I came here to see him and to work. And then he told me he was broke, that he didn't have a job for me, and if I didn't want to starve, I, I'd have to live here. I've got to get you out of here. Oh, no, you, you mustn't try anything like that. He'll, he'll kill you. I know him. Listen, I'll get you out of here if it's the last thing I do. Look, look here's a little rose I, I bought from a flower girl tonight in a place where we were drinking. You take it. Keep it. It's a pledge. That I will come back. That I will take you away from here. What? what what's the matter? Haven't you heard what I was saying? What, what is it? In that door behind you. It's Clark. Yeah. It's Clark. Indian Jack Sailor. What are you doing in this room? Keep away from me. Yeah, sure I will. As soon as I'm through. Oh, don't, you. Jack. Please. Keep quiet. Put that knife down. Please. Please don't hurt him, Jack. He wasn't doing anything. We were just talking. Yeah, I heard you. You gave the little girl a pretty posy to remind her that you'd be back to take her away from all this, did you? 
Well, here's what you take, what you say. And this, and this. We're out of here, all of you. Yeah. You're a bunch of drunken bums. Get out. Hey, car, get these bums out of here. Dump them someplace and forget this address. Get going. lying there on the table. You trap shutter. I'll shut it for you. I'm not afraid of you. You won't do anything to me now. Oh, is that so? Oh. Huh. Holder and an iron witch. Oh, you sure wallop her. Huh? Oh, get the head up of that dame's lip. I'm going to let her have what I gave that sailor if she don't lay off the I'll gag. I'll take it easy, Dick. The hand guys for that kind of stuff around here. Yeah. Well, I ain't going to stretch. You better get out of sight if you bump somebody off. Who says I bumped anybody off? I, I thought you did. Well, don't go jumping at conclusions. I just had a fight with a mug, that's all. Okay, okay, forget it. What did you phone for me for? You gotta get me out of here till this blows over. I ain't got no place to take you. You can put me up at your place. Not to that. I'll let you stay there tonight. What you do after that is your affair. I ain't gonna get mixed in any more of your deal. You're in this one, ain't you? Yeah. But when you leave here tonight, I'm finished. <laughs> Yellow. Uh... Call it what you want to, pal. But I'm through with your record. Yeah. Okay, fella. You get me over to L.A. and I don't give a rap what you do. Meanwhile, responding to an ambulance follow-up call, officers found Cicero De Silva dying in Seaside Hospital. In spite of the frantic efforts of the surgeons, the young sailor died. His companions of the evening were taken to headquarters, questioned by Detective Lieutenant Farrell and Pruitt, loaded in the car, and taken to search for the taxi driver. See anybody hanging around those cabs that looks like the guy you, that drove you off? No, uh, not so far. Well, keep looking. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is it? There's the guy. Right over there. One standing with that sedan? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, we'll whip around there and talk to him. I wish they fixed the brakes on these wrecks. Mm, me too. Hey, you. Come here, will you? Sure. What's on your mind? Hiya, boys. Hello, guy. I want you to show us where you took these fellas last night. What's the idea? We're police officers. We want to look that place over. And we want to talk to you. Now, wait a minute. I don't know nothing about that place. Well, you knew enough about it to take these boys out there. Yeah, that's all I did to. Did you see a fight out there last night? No, I never saw no fight. Heard Clark say something about a bunch of bums. Next thing I know, he's telling me to dump these boys someplace and forget the address. Oh, so he told you to dump them out, did he? Sure. Brought him back to the ship. Uh, where's Clark now? I don't know. Maybe my boss does. He was out there after I left. Where's he? In that little joint right over there, getting a cup of coffee. Call him over here. Okay. Hey, boss. Boss. Come out here a minute. Some fellas want to talk to you. Be out in a minute. Didn't know you boys made a rest for bootlegging. Bootlegging? Sure. That's all that boy Clark does. A little bootlegger. Yeah, that's what you think. What's in your mind, Gary? And these fellas is cops, boss. I want some dope on Clark. Yeah? What do you want to know about him? Where is he? I don't know. Oh, don't have the sap stuff. I'm telling you the truth. Now, look. Two of our men, Griffin and Thomas, have been out to that place on 251st Street. And we know he's not there. Who told you the address? The boy who got stabbed out there. He told the doctor just before he died. Now, look here. I don't want to get mixed up in anything. I don't know where Clark is now. I took him to my place last night, and he slept there. Me and the girl sat around in the kitchen all night. Or rather, what was left of it when we got home. Where'd Clark go this morning? Well, we started back to San Pedro. My car broke down. Clark went over to a filling station and made a deal with a Jap vegetable man to bring him and the girl back here. It's something about seeing a fellow over on West 10th. 
Clark claimed this fellow had a gun that belonged to him. You know who this fellow was? Yeah, it's like his name was Luigi or something like that. Oh, I know that fellow, Bob. Mm. Runs the taxi business over there. Yeah, that's the one. Clark said he could get this guy to take him to Los Angeles. All right, we'll have a talk with him. Meantime, if this bird shows up, keep your mouth shut and call us, will you? Sure, glad to. Pruitt and Ferrell interview Luigi and obtain the information that Clark has rented a home in Culver City. Ferrell, you come in here with me. We'll take the front door. The rest of you boys can cover the back of the place. If this lug takes a powder on us, let him have it. He's tough. Watch out for knives, though. Okay, let's get going. Don't worry. Okay. 
So long. I'll be seeing you. Come and get it or I'll throw it out. Hey, you want to take him now? Yes. Now, listen, Ed, you stop his hand. I'll gag him. Why don't you get his keys? Okay. When you get outside, we'll lock him in. Get down to the next floor and out on that ledge that runs down the outside of the building. It's only a little ways to the fire escape from there. We can get to the ground and still be inside the building out of sight. We run into another guard. And them scaffolds will hold them Hey, up. do you want this stuff or not? Come on! Oh, keep your head on, will you? Listen, coming? guy, don't get me in their back pocket. Yeah, hey, what are you going to do about it? Get his hands, Ed. I can't get off my face. Pipe down. Hey, gag him, Joe. Come on, open your mouth. Going to put a bit in there, you lug. That's it. Hmm. Nice work, boys. Got the keys, Clark? Yeah, let's scram. Better fix our boyfriend up before we go. Here, yeah, you get up. <clears throat> this will hold you for a while. <clears throat> Come on, you bird. Darn it, sir. Right, let's go. Come on. Before the last man had disappeared down the street, the escape was discovered. Officials immediately set in motion one of the county's most gigantic manhunts. By night, all three of the fugitives were back in jail. Within a week, two more were caught. But Indian Jack Clark, the killer of Cicero de Silva, had disappeared. Spring passed into summer, summer into winter, but the killer still eluded police. of Minot in North Dakota, the feathery flakes of snow were falling fast as the December day weakened and died. Before a fire in a cozy cottage, a man and woman are talking. I tell you I'm not crazy, Rosalie. I saw him do it. Oh, Bob, you're just jealous. You've been trying to cause trouble ever since I married Ed Miller. Well, I'm not going to stand for it any longer. When Ed comes home tonight, I'm going to tell him what you've told me. All right, tell him. I know I'm right, and I'm going to talk to the police about it. Oh. Why do you want to do this to me? I love you, Rosalie. I've loved you ever since we were kids in school together. I thought I had a chance once. I did have two, didn't I? Oh, I... I don't know. Yes, you do know. You told me so lots of times before... Well, before this fellow Miller came along. I'd even thought that someday, maybe... Well, I thought... Everybody thought... Oh, what's the use? Yes, Bob. What's the use? Look at me, Rosalie. Oh, please. Please, Bob. Please don't. Look at me. Tell me there isn't any use. Go on, tell me now. Please. Please, please, you're hurting me. You see, you can't look at me and tell me you don't still love me. You married Ed Miller for spite, pure spite, and you know it. You're still in love with me, Rosalind. No. No, Bob, I... No, I'm not. You see, you can't lie. Even to yourself. You know I'm right. Oh. Oh, what are we going to do? I'm going to tell what I know about him. But that's not being a very good sport, is it, Bob? Why should we think of that? He never did. I'm not going to let a misguided notion of sportsmanship rob me of my chance of happiness. Maybe. Maybe you're right, Bob. Of course I'm right. You'll see. <laughs> No, Chief, I'm not crazy. I saw him do it. When? Yesterday. I went over to the city hall with him yesterday when we went to Grafton. I was sitting in the office there waiting for him to see the mayor about that paint contract, you know. Yes, I know about that. Well, I went out to get a drink, and I was going to walk around outside. Then I remembered I'd left my paper in the office, so I went back in to get it. And that's when I saw him. Well, what was he doing? Do you know those books they have around police stations that show pictures of men wanted in other towns? Mug books? Yes, yes, that's the kind. Well, there was one of them lying on the desk there. When I passed by the door, I saw him look at a page in the book, and then he looked around to see if anybody was watching. And did he see you? No, no, I jumped back just then. I watched him, though, and quick as a flash, he tore a page out of the book and stuffed it into his pocket. That's awfully funny. Why should Ed Miller tear a picture out of a mug book? The most obvious answer is that there's something in that book he doesn't want people to see. But that wouldn't help any. All of our police departments have mug books. You have one? Of course. Now, this is it. Uh, let's see it. Here, I, I took down the page number where he tore it out. Now, how'd you do that? Well, just after he tore it out, he went into the mayor's office, and I slipped in and looked at the place where he tore the page out. Uh, oh, here it is. 
Uh, page 59 is the last one, then it jumps to 62. Well, it's not likely we have the same book. Let's take a look at page 16, just for a look. Whoa, whoa, too far. That's 80. 78, 74, 77, 68, 65, 62. There we are. did I tell you? Sit down, Ed. I want to talk to you. You too, Bob. What's on your mind, Chief? Know what a mug book is, Ed? Why, I don't think so, Chief. What is it? It's a book of pictures of wanted men, and men who have been convicted of crime. I see. Well, what's that to me? I'm wondering. And this is a mug book, Ed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, pretty thick one, isn't it? There are a lot of pictures and circulars in there, Ed. Men who have committed crimes. Some of them have been cut. Some of them haven't. Oh, I see. Ever been convicted of a crime, Ed? Of uh, course he has. You know he has, too. Now, take it easy, Bob. How about it, Clark? Clark. Yes, Clark, Indian Jack Clark, Earl Jack Clark, alias Ed Miller. How'd you find out? Take a look at page 60 in that book, Clark. Why, my name's not Clark. All right, take a look. Ever see that people? Okay. Yeah, that's me. Why deny it? Yeah, sure, I'm Clark. Indian Jack Clark. Wanted for murder. Sentenced to hang. So what? Go on, wire him. Tell him you've got the man. Please don't cry, honey. It worked out the way it should. Oh, I wonder if it did. Really. What do you mean, darling? Oh, I don't know. What does anything mean? It doesn't make any difference now. Well, you were right, Bob. I hope it's some consolation to you to know that. Rosalind. Well, you don't mean that. You don't really love Ed or Jack or whatever his name is. Do you, Rosalind? Oh, I, I tell you, I'm all confused. Everything's sort of fallen to pieces. I, I didn't believe it at first, but... But now I, I just... There, there, darling, don't cry. You'll feel better in the morning. I'll run along. Yeah. Please do, Bob. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a little box. He asked me to give it to you. Oh. What is it? I don't know. Why don't you open it? Oh. What is it? Just a rose. A red rose.
Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation of broadcast 230 regarding a murder. Suspects in this case was hanged at San Quentin. That's all. Rolls and Clips. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.